University of Oklahoma Libraries produced this tutorial in collaboration with the Office of the Senior Vice President and Provost, the Department of English, the OU Writing Center, and the Integrity Council. This tutorial will introduce and define the purpose of academic writing, explain the concept of plagiarism, identify types of plagiarism, explain proper citation practices, and describe possible penalties for plagiarism. What is the most important purpose of writing assignments? Sometimes it's easy to forget that the point of college is to learn and grow. It is also the point of every college writing assignment. That means writing is really about thinking and understanding. As we'll see in this tutorial, plagiarism often starts when thinking and understanding stop. What is the purpose of practicing writing skills? Let's admit it, copying words from books or the internet does take some effort and intelligence, and the result can look just like a real college paper. Why don't universities teach students how to copy? Because, compared to knowing how to write, knowing how to copy is worthless. Being in college means practicing the ability to explain complex materials and express coherent thought in writing independently. Once you graduate, you will be expected to use writing skills in nearly any career that you might enter, whether it's, for example, engineering, marketing, science, or medicine. Even in jobs that do not emphasize writing, the mental skills that writing builds understanding, explaining, and expressing will still be valuable. What is the purpose of academic writing? Academic writing is part of a conversation between experts in a field. Professors write in response to previous research. Other professors respond in return. Academic writing aims to help the advancement of society and human knowledge, not just one particular employer. While as a student, you are not an expert, you are an expert in training. When you write a college essay, you practice participating in the conversation. What are the purposes of college writing assignments? To improve your understanding of a particular topic or problem, to learn how to express your understanding in writing, to help the professor evaluate how well you understand a topic, and to engage with the ongoing conversation in a given field. What is academic misconduct? Academic misconduct is any action that a student knows will lead to the improper evaluation of academic work. Cheating misleads instructors, so the student receives a grade that is undeserved. Cheating also violates the mutual trust that should exist between professor and student. The student expects to be graded fairly and the professor expects that the student will work honestly. What is plagiarism? Plagiarism is a form of academic misconduct in which you represent someone else's words or ideas as your own. When you turn in a writing assignment, you are claiming that the words in it are expressions of your own understanding. If you use the words or thoughts of others to support your argument or to report on previous research, you must notify the reader that you are doing so. If the fact is not common knowledge and you did not discover the fact yourself, you must inform the reader where you found it. While this tutorial focuses on plagiarism of written works, one could also plagiarize computer code, mathematical expressions, and artistic and musical works. So what's wrong with plagiarism? Plagiarism defeats the purpose of college writing assignments, which is to improve your understanding of a topic or issue and to learn how to express yourself in writing. Plagiarism is cheating, when you commit plagiarism, you are lying to your professor. You are making him or her believe that the words or thoughts of others are your own. You are also being unfair to other students by gaining an advantage that is not deserved. Plagiarism defeats the purpose of scholarship. Academic writing is done to express new ideas. It adds to the ongoing conversation between professors in a given field. When you plagiarize, you are presenting old explanations as new or you are repeating facts that others have discovered before you. In other words, you are not truly entering the academic conversation. You are just repeating something someone else has already said. Why include other people's writings in your paper? Quoting from outside sources is an important part of most academic writing assignments. If you are writing a research paper, 
Quoting allows you to include information from the outside source that you have found on your topic. If you are writing an argument, you can quote from expert sources to support your position. Most college writing assignments require that you quote from outside sources in order to demonstrate what you have learned. You should never use outside sources without giving credit to the original author. Common types of plagiarism. Whole paper plagiarism, cut and paste plagiarism, cut and paste with references, and self-plagiarism. In whole paper plagiarism, all or most of the student's paper is lifted from another student or a published source such as the internet, a book, or an article. It is especially bad to buy a paper from any source that offers ready-made term papers. Students who have engaged in this behavior in the past have been expelled from the university. In cut and paste plagiarism, Parts of a paper are taken from the internet or somewhere else and incorporated into the student's paper with no signal that they are not the student's own expression. A frequently heard excuse from students is that they included material from another source and then either just forgot to add the references or else put them in but accidentally turned in the wrong draft. Unless the plagiarism is truly minor, the student will still be in trouble even if such excuses are true. Cut and paste plagiarism usually contains lots of direct quotes that substitute for the student's own writing, quoted material that appear without quotation marks and that lack any textual indication that the materials are quoted. In such cases, the quoted text substitutes for the student's own writing. Merely adding the footnotes never cures plagiarism when copying replaces the student's own writing. In cut and paste plagiarism with references, words or ideas in a paper are included from another source, a reference to the sources is included, but there is not an indication of direct quotation. A reference that indicates only that the accompanying text is somehow derived from or related to the cited source. A reference alone does not show that the text is a direct quotation from that source. Thus, a reference alone does not suspend the professor's expectation that the words are your own words. A direct quotation with a reference but without quotation marks is plagiarism. Self-plagiarism occurs when a student submits the same assignment in a second class. This violates the assumption that every assignment advances a student's learning and growth. Unless the second instructor expressly allows it, submitting an assignment already submitted for another class is a form of academic misconduct. In the material that follows, note that a citation means saying where material comes from, while quotation means indicating that words are being directly copied. So how do you include others' works correctly? You must include a citation when you use an outside source in your paper. If you use an idea from the source but rewritten in your own words, you have to include a citation plus a textual signal indicating the idea came from an outside source. If you use the exact wording from an outside source, then you have to include a citation plus quotation marks around the exact wording. There are several proper citation practices. These include in-text citation, direct quotation, block quotation, and paraphrase. Quoting with in-text citations. In-text citations lets the reader know who and what source you are referencing. Generally, this is done by including the author's name and the page number from which the given quote, paraphrase, or summary was taken. Here's an example of an in-text citation. The information superhighway is about the global movement of weightless bits at the speed of light. Negroponte, page 12. You can also mention the author in the text before you give the quote. For example, Negroponte writes, the information superhighway is about the global movement of weightless bits at the speed of light, page 12. Direct quotations. When you wish to include another writer's actual words in your paper, you must include quotation marks and a parenthetical citation. The following are examples for a correct and an incorrect direct quotation. Correct. Negroponte writes, the information superhighway is about the global movement of weightless bits at the speed of light, page 12. Incorrect. Negroponte writes that the information in superhighway is about the global movement of weightless bits at the speed of light, page 12. Block quotations. 
If you wish to quote a passage that is more than four lines long, you should put that passage in a block quotation instead of using quotation marks. You must introduce the quote and then start it on a new line. Indent the entire quote by one inch. The following is an example of a block quotation. Negroponte writes, The information superhighway is about the global movement of weightless bits at the speed of light. As one industry after another looks at itself in the mirror and asks about its future in a digital world, that future is driven almost 100% by the ability of that company's product or services to be rendered in digital form. Page 12. Paraphrase. Paraphrase is the practice of putting a passage from another text in your own words. You should do this when the exact wording of a passage isn't as important as the general information that is being conveyed. When you paraphrase, you must provide citation. Both the author's name and a page number has to be included. Paraphrase example. Original text. If you make cashmere sweaters or Chinese food, it will be a long time before we can convert them to bits. Paraphrase. As Negroponte notes, it will be a long time before we can convert material products like sweaters and food into digital bits. Page 12. Improper paraphrase. You should only paraphrase about three to four lines of text. If you paraphrase a passage longer than that, it will be considered plagiarism, even if you include parenthetical citation. After all, if you paraphrase an entire paragraph or a whole page, you aren't generating your own writing, you are just moving words around. Penalties for plagiarism will vary according to the severity of the offense. For less serious offenses, the professor may give the student an admonition or a warning. In most cases, this will result in a grade of zero on the assignment. Admonitions do not result in institutional penalties like suspension or expulsion. They are not reportable outside of the university as an act of misconduct. A student who receives an admonition has the right to contest it in a formal hearing. For more serious offenses, the professor must report a violation of the Academic Integrity Code. A student reported for violating the Academic Integrity Code has the right to a formal hearing. A student reported and found responsible receives a grade penalty and institutional penalty. The grade penalty may be up to an F in the course. In order of severity, institutional penalties cover the following range. Censure, which is a formal reprimand not noted on the student's transcript. Completion of remedial activities, such as online tutorials and one credit hour courses. Suspension, which is the loss of student status for one or more semesters, plus notation of the suspension on the transcript. Expulsion, the permanent loss of student status. Thank you for completing this tutorial on academic integrity. Please direct questions and comments regarding this tutorial to Greg Heiser, Associate Provost. For further information on academic writing and research, please contact the OU Writing Center and OU Libraries.